Welcome. Welcome to Liberating Structures. I am your servant leader. Today, my name is Alex Slowly. So who am I? I'm an Agile coach. Uh, I'm actually from the United States. You can probably tell from my accent. Originally from Seattle. I worked at Microsoft for a really long time, 15 years at Microsoft. Too long, probably. And then I became like an Agile guy, and I traveled the world uh, and did a lot of Agile consulting. And that's all I do now is Agile consulting, Agile coaching, Agile training. And I'm based in Sydney, Australia. And I've done this at a bunch of different companies. I've done Agile transformations at giant companies like Cisco and Intel. And I've done it at uh, government, and I've done it in nonprofits, and I've done it at startups. And uh, along my, my career path, one of the things I really focused on was facilitation. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. Because Liberating Structures has a cool name, but all it really is is a set of facilitation techniques. So uh, this deck is really short because I'm going to show you some slides, but there's not that many slides. Um, uh, there is 16 slides in the whole deck. Instead, what we're going to focus most of our time on is actually practicing these facilitation techniques together today. So I hope you're ready after lunch to do some facilitation. All right, so what are liberating structures? These are the two guys that invented it. That's Henri and that's Keith. And these two guys are like uh, management consultant kind of guys. They go into organizations and they help them have discussions. And they are essentially the inventors of uh, liberating structures. And of course, just like inventors of something, what's the first thing they did? They wrote a book. Now this is a website known as Amazon. You may be familiar with this, right? There's the book, The Surprising Power of Liberating Structures. You can go buy that book. I'm sure Henri and Keith would be very appreciative if you went out and bought their book because this is how they partially make their living. But this is the age of the internet, which means everything is on the internet for free. Yeah, seems kind of counterintuitive, right? They write the book, but everything in the book is essentially online. You can go to their website, it's liberatingstructures.com, and it has all the information you would ever need to know about liberating structures. But I'm gonna break it down and make it really easy for you today, because I'm gonna show you how to do some. So these are the liberating structures. They look really cute. They got cute names and cute little icons. All they are is a set of facilitation techniques. That's all they are. It's like if you were a facilitator, if you had a toolbox of techniques you could put your hand into and grab something and use right away. That's all this is, is a set of facilitation techniques. And I'm gonna show you a couple today. One thing that's consistent with all these techniques is that they are comprised of five design elements. In other words, when these techniques are described, there's five things that define what this technique is. And I'll show you what it looks like so it's super easy for you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a facilitation technique together right now, or you know, immediately pretty much. And this is the technique we're gonna do. It's called one, two, four, all. So, it's two pages. On the website, it's two pages of stuff. Two pages of description. Here's all the stuff you ever need to know about using this technique. And if you look on the website, it's got the five design elements. Uh, you can't really see this too well on this monitor. It's not like high def or anything. But if you went to this website and looked up 124all, it would have the five elements, which are how you structure the invitation, how many people can be involved, how you set up the space. It's essentially, think of, a, think of it as a cookbook or a recipe book for facilitation techniques. It says, in order to do this thing, you need to do these five steps or whatever. And it gives you time boxes, and it's all very mechanical and very easy to do. Two pages for this, one, two, four, all. Now, the trick with any facilitation technique or learning new coaching techniques is to make it as simple as possible and practice. So what I've done for you today is I'm going to make it very, very simple, and then you're going to practice. Because this two pages translates into these five steps. That's it. It's that simple. So when you look at this, 
and you go to the website, all it is is this, five simple steps. You go read the facilitation technique and you distill it down to its core elements. So what are we gonna do today? The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna structure the invitation. Here's the invitation. I want you to think, every person in this room, I want you to think why you're here today. And I don't mean like metaphysical, why am I here in this universe? <laughs> I mean like, why am I at Agile India today? It's a work day, you've got a family, you've got work life, so why are you here today? And that's the invitation. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to give you one minute to think about why you're here. And of course, like every Agile coach, Scrum Master, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna time box it. You have one minute to think why you're here. That's your one minute. Now, the next thing I'd like you to do is you have two minutes to find a partner. You're gonna form a team of two, and you're gonna talk about why you're here. How you divide up your two minutes is entirely up to you. Who you pick as your partner is entirely up to you. But I'm gonna give you two minutes to talk about why you're here with one other person in this room. And of course, I'm gonna time box it. And your time starts now. Wow, that was some good conversation there. <laughs> now, the next step, I'll show you what the next step is. You're gonna form teams of four, and you're gonna talk for four minutes about why you're here, <laughs> right? You can probably see why this is called one, two, four, all now, right? Yeah. Teams of four, four minutes, why you're here, and your time starts now, go. You guys want a selfie with Shane? You want a selfie? That's selfie stick. Go, 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 go. How many guys? Well, I heard some great conversations out there today, but we've entered the last phase of one, two, four, all. We get to share. Uh, so I'm interested about why you guys are here. Um, who here would like to share about what their group talked about, maybe one or two reasons why you're here today. Who would like to be the brave person and get us started? I can do this. Oh, please tell us why you're here. Yeah. Okay, my name is Anand uh, and this is my first Agile conference and the colleagues here in this group, uh, one of them is Agile coach, uh, one of them is Scrum Master, one of them is going to lead a bigger team now. Yeah. I think, and myself as well, who is yeah. starting off into it. Yeah. So as you see, they're all in a different uh, spectrum of experience and learning mode already. Wow. So we are hoping that we can learn a lot from the experience around, from attending the sessions. And I think the expectation also is uh, in terms of some of the methodologies, some uh, best practices that we can take back and actually implement. 
So one of them being agile coach, she wants to actually go and implement something. So mm-hmm. the experience and the uh, mm-hmm. expectations are at a different level. But yes, we're hoping yeah. to take as much as possible. That's super awesome. I heard like diversity of opinion, learning new things. Thank you for sharing. That was really awesome. Uh, Shane, I saw you raise your hand back there. Why? What did your group talk about? Uh, we spoke about eliciting, gathering new ideas, Ooh. learning new stuff, but also sharing ideas. And um, three of we were group of five, not four. We broke the rules. <gasps> oh my goodness! That's <laughs> <laughs> really five. That, that was uh, sort of five, six, seven years we've been coming to the event. Yeah. And the other two, this was the first. So oh. So looking at patterns as well in there. Cool. That's awesome. Who else would like to share about what their group talked about, why they're here? Yes. Yeah, so we have a mix of a coach uh, who's already into this, a person who has already seen uh, agile practice is into the mode of uh, uh, expanding it. Yeah. Uh, so the common thing which we all are looking out for is enhancing our knowledge, Ooh. gathering uh, how the industry is going, uh, what right. things we can take back from here to further, either enhance the process which we are trying to get and addressing the challenges we are facing. Yeah. And uh, also to have a quick solution on uh, things which we are struggling with. Oh, okay. Yeah, solidarity with all the struggles that all the Agilists have, right? Agilist Anonymous. <laughs> I've been an Agilist for five years. How about this side of the room? What did you guys talk about? Someone, yeah, way back there. Yeah, to uh, hear new perspectives, to identify uh, hmm. collaboration techniques. Cool. Uh, and to use the professional development tools. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. So I, I can sense something up here. <laughs> What's going on up here? Someone, get someone, someone, give me something up here. I can, I can feel it. Give it to me. Give it to me. I can wait a long time. Oh. Somebody, what it is actually. Wow. And yeah, it is mostly about the experiences that we want to take back from the conference. Awesome. The conversations. Oh. Yeah. Friendships from groups. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Thank you for sharing. Uh, what I want you to do now. Oh! I can't resist it. You're so eager. Please go. <laughs> You're standing up too. I love that. Go. Is it okay? Yes. Go. So we want to attend this conference to become consciously incompetent. <laughs> I'm, I'm good at that, but keep going. Yeah. Now, number two is we, uh, we were harnessed, one of us was very harnessed. We wanted yeah. to stay away from work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm with you there. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, the other things are quite common, networking, yeah. uh, taking the ideas which can be implemented quickly, learning the new frameworks and some of yeah. the That's very nice. Thank you for sharing. The other one that you love is unlearning. <laughs> <laughs> unlearning the bad habits? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I use beer for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> what I'd like you to all do, to do now is give yourself a hand because you've just completed your first liberating structure. All right, so uh, thank you for sharing. I loved all your stories. Um, But the really important part wasn't why you're here. Although I do care why you're here. The important part was that you practiced actually doing it. Now what I'm interested in hearing, what were your thoughts about the process? How did it feel? How did it sound? What were your emotions? What are your questions? What are your realizations? What are your aha moments? Not about why you're here, what about this technique? What do you guys think? All inclusive. So you think it's uh, all inclusive? Everyone's involved? Mm-hmm. That's nice. 
What are the? Right. You think Agilus would be good at reflection, right? Yeah. Yeah. That first minute is really important. Ah, the invitation. You always structure an invitation. And you structure the invitation that that you have as your agenda as an Agile coach. If you're trying to accomplish something, that's the invitation. What other realizations or comments or questions? Oh, please. One of the things that we realized was because we had already discussed Newbury and Haskell. Yeah. It was so much more clear when the four of us came together. We we utilized less than four minutes. Then we started discussing about something else. And learning. Please. by this approach, there were the ideas and the views were multiple. Ah. If in the starting, we start discussing as a table, yeah. there were very less ideas. But once we started with one, two, then four, the yeah. ideas were more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This technique is actually designed for divergence, to get as many ideas from the group as possible. That's what it's designed for. We had another comment? I think your, the two words there, silently reflect, are very powerful. Yes. Because they are there and because we were looking at it, the, you know, the impression was, yeah. or the implicit instruction was that I have to think myself first. That's right. If you had written any other word, perhaps, maybe I would have still got distracted with what others were doing and right. I would have not done it. Yeah, looking but inside yourself. Looking, I think that, that really helps to start the whole process. Yeah, you, I, you are a very spiritual man, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. What other questions? Oh, oh, oh up here. So I think the, uh, the points which we have, why we are here, kind of similar. People are from, from different world, right. but, and we think outside of it that, uh, oh God, my problem is so big, but uh, from here you feel that everyone is somewhere struggling with the same thing. Ooh, thing. it's like you made a connection with the people you talk to. That's the way I would describe it. I don't know how you would describe mm-hmm. it. But uh, uh, over the years I've said facilitation techniques are about uh, enabling conversations, but I actually think it's about having connection. Back here, I know we had some comments back here. Oh, back here? Um, the, the two of us that started in our, you know, two, 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 yeah. uh, we found some ideas that were formidable before. Yeah. But would it be an idea if you, you know, if this group of two sits up and then finds the other person who can share more ideas, how do you do that regularly? Absolutely. You just let the group self, self-organize. self And you'll have people who are bumblebees and they'll go around the groups and you'll have butterflies who attract people to them. It's whatever works for you guys. And I'm just here to, to help you facilitate. I don't tell you how to do it. But great observations. I really love that. Back here we had another, yeah. I guess two of us have been talking apart from that when we break the ice and we went and talked to the group, another group, that was something very nice because we didn't know what they were coming with their ideas and right. thoughts in mind, but that somehow made me completely silent. Yeah, that was really nice. You guys did a great job. Well, what can I tell you that will add to your observations? Um, once again, it's a divergence technique. It's to be inclusive. Over here, someone said inclusive. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, it's to get as much from the group as possible. You form connections. Uh, you have a great dialogue. You'll probably find similarities and differences. Uh, I use this technique all the time in workshops like this. I use it in retrospectives, uh, a lot of my trainings. It's a really great way to get people involved. Even uh, introverts are OK with this in general because it's, it's a small group. It gives them a little more safe space to talk. Um, You'll notice I didn't really tell you how to self-form, and I didn't really get upset when you formed groups of three or five or six, right? I don't worry about it. I just kind of give you general guidelines, and you you figure it out. And I think you did a great job. So there's your first one, one, two, four, all. And now we're going to do the next one. Oh, we've got more questions. Oh, you first, please. So I was just going to ask, how do you determine this technique will work for something? Like, you've experimented with it, but like, you've tried it in I've never had it fail. So it works for you. 
I do it all the time and people just do it. You'll notice you guys just did it, right? In fact, most of the time, the problem is not getting people to start talking. The problem I have is getting people to shut up. <laughs> because once they start talking, they want to keep talking. Now, you said how big a group? Yeah. <sighs> Probably the biggest group I've ever done this with is about 250, 300 people. And it was so loud, I couldn't even think. It was so loud. It was a giant room, 250, 300 people. They just went crazy. How much time it took for the hair? About the same as this for one, two, four, all. Yeah, it's pretty quick. Alex, one day, one last question. Sure. How would, how would we do this differently for distributed teams? These are really tough to do with distributed teams. Uh, generally, my recommendation is if you're going to try liberating structures or facilitation techniques, the single best way to do it is to have a facilitator in each, each location. Okay, good. Yeah, generally what I'll do is I'll prepare someone in the remote location to kind of do it alongside with me on a remote connection. You'll get a better result that way. You can do it as a facilitator remotely, but the time boxes really blow out because you're doing a lot of like yeah. organization through the teleconference essentially. Uh, so if you can get train up someone in liberating structures at your remote locations, it makes it a lot easier. All right, good job guys. Let's do the next one. That was excellent. All right, here we go. Here's your next one. You're gonna be practicing this today. Um, this is called Troika Consulting. Once again, it's on the website. Troika Consulting, it's two pages, right? It's got the five design elements. Here's how you structure your time boxes. Here's the steps. Here's who you do it with. Here's how many people. Here's how you structure the invitation. All those design elements are exactly the same as one, two, four, all. It's a recipe for a facilitation technique. Once again, when you read these things, you can distill them down to their basic elements. Troika Consulting distills down to that, right? So don't feel intimidated when you go to the website and look it up. It's this easy. Here are the steps for Troika Consulting. Now we've, uh, we haven't talked about this yet. What's your challenge at work? Remember my uh, invitation for one, two, four, all? It was why are you here today, right? Well now your invitation is, what's your challenge at work? I want you to silently reflect for one minute what your biggest challenge at work is. One minute. What's your challenge at work? There's your time box. Now, we're gonna have a little fun. I need two victims, I mean volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> Who would like to volunteer? Oh, you're so brave. I'm Alex. Nice, nice to meet you. I'm Alex, nice to meet you. Okay, what we gotta do is we gotta, we gotta stand like over here so you're not in front of the screen. So come over here, over here. Over here. Yeah. Yeah. That's good, that's good. Can everybody see us? Yes. Okay. What we're gonna do is we've each thought about our big challenge at work right now. We've done that. You're gonna form teams of three. How many people do we have in our team? Three. We have three people in our team, yes. You're gonna form teams of three. That's the next step, right? Form teams of three. 
You're not actually going to do it right now. I'm just going to demonstrate it to you. So we formed a team of three, and we need one client and two consultants. That's what it says there, right? Okay. Oh, you want to be the client? Excellent. So you're the client. We're the two consultants. Perfect. Client, consultants. Client, consultants. Okay. Okay. That's your, your first, first thing to do. The next thing we're going to do is the client's going to share their challenge at work. Remember that? And we get to ask the client questions for two minutes. Okay, so tell us your challenge at work. So uh, once we've completed, so usually in Target we have something called a dojo. Yeah. Uh, one of the offerings of dojo is, uh, you know, we go out as coaches to some portfolio teams yeah, yeah. and then support them. And that support is for six to eight weeks. Mm. So once we finish the engagement and there has been a good, uh, you know, momentum, mm -hmm. we come back. Mm. So, but then there is no sustenance. We don't have a sustenance model to continue that. Oh. You know, so we get busy with another thing. Mm. So how can I address and bring in sustenance of the practices mm. that we've got? Do you want to ask a question? Okay. Do you measure, like after going back, how the changes have taken effect? Is yes. there a way that you measure? Yeah, changes? we do. There is something called a LMS leadership model survey. Oh. So what we do is cool. uh, uh, we first, uh, you know, do a survey with the team to figure out where they are, at what stage they are at the beginning of the engagement. So in terms of security, engage, uh, engineering practices, agile, product, etc., etc. So after six weeks, we measure the same thing again, and then we figure out whether they were at one and now they're at two. Mm. So it's a good improvement. Mm. But then that's it. And then we get back. Do you have any more questions? Right. So when you move out of the organization, do you try to ensure that there is someone who has already taken the coaching initiative okay. and is able to? We're done. Okay, all right. Okay. That was two minutes. <laughs> wasn't really two minutes, but it, just pretend it was two okay. minutes. Sorry, okay. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So we ask questions uh, of the client because we're the consultants. That's what we do. We ask mm -hmm. questions, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. The next time box, five minutes. The client turns around. So the client, you face that way. And you and me, the consultants, mm -hmm. we talk about the client behind their back like real consultants. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what do you think about the problem? Yeah, I think the problem is regarding sustainability. Yeah, she has a big problem. Yeah. What do you think? I don't know. Your... Maybe some kind of program where they put in a sustained model, figure out what a sustained model is. A framework is. maybe? Yeah, that's not <laughs> Are you a real consultant? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We talk about the client's problem and how to solve it as real consultants for five minutes. Five minutes. The next step, the client turns around and we all discuss the solutions because you heard everything we said, right? That's the whole point. You're facing this way and you're listening to us talk about you and your problem and how to solve it. All right? That's it. You guys did a great job. I want you to give a round of applause to our volunteers. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Now. Don't feel like the time boxes have to be obeyed strictly. If your team feels like they can proceed through the steps more quickly, perfectly fine. Go for it. But I'm going to ring the bell for each time box just so you know that you have to move on, okay? So I'm going to go back to the first step we're going to do. You've already done that, you've already done that. You have one minute to form teams of three and pick one client and two consultants. And your time starts now. Hmm? You have 10 minutes left. Oof. Here you go, there's Mike. 10 minutes? We'll be done. Oh, it's on. Uh, Next step. Next step.
Next step. Next step. Five minutes. He just watching. <laughs> nice to see your uh, video from Eisenbridge some three weeks back, three four weeks back. We did some video. So now we have a call sometime late in the evening from Eisenbridge. So you knew. I remember. Did I? Oh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> good, good, good so what do you think? Yeah. Well, there's some good conversations going on here. Right. Well, I hope you have fun. <laughs> yeah. There's another minute of conversation and then... <laughs> yeah, I get that sometimes. I get Jack Black a lot too. Seattle. Yeah. West Coast. Exactly. Exactly. Of course. When I grew up in high school, Nirvana, Alice in Chains, Pearl Jam, that was the thing. I had a time when I would get an arm on the leg to see Pearl Jam. They're all old men like me now. <laughs> yeah. We're on the last step. Last step. That's it. Get it eventually. I'm patient. Wow, you guys wanted to talk. <laughs> Woo. All right, well, thank you. That was a great conversation. I could hear some awesome stuff going on there. Uh, what you would do now is you would just rotate that role, and you would go around your team and essentially replicate that pattern. Um, I'm going to get through this pretty quickly now because we've got one minute left. One minute? One minute. Wow. And I like time boxes. 
So if you have, if you have questions, come find me later, buy me a beer, and I'll answer all your questions. Yeah, no, I won't answer without beer. Okay, so we don't have time for this one. This is another one. Once again, it's that simple, right? It's five steps from two pages. Um, I encourage you to mix and match these. You string them together and be creative with them. You don't have to follow the rules. You can change them to, feet, uh, to meet your needs. Um, the presentation to the, the link to the presentation is in the presentation. And they'll share it later. So feel free, go check it out. Um, and thank you, I appreciate it. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you very much. Now go have fun. See you later. Go, go. <laughs>